I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Show us now your grace that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to see. Sing God's praise than when we first begun. Hi, I'm Ray, Joanne's favorite son. I must say. So, uh, but I thank you all for being here. I want to introduce uh, one of my daughters, uh, Sabrina, who's going to speak. Hi, I'm Sabrina Slay. I'm Ray's daughter. Um, I'm going to read her obituary. Joanne Morrison Slay of Grapevine, Texas, went to be with our Lord and Savior on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. She is survived by her children, Alice Oldham, Elizabeth Ann Lamont, and her husband, husband James, Ray Slay, and his wife, Chrissy, daughter-in-law, Pamela, her brother, Ray Sock Manning Morrison, as well as her seven grandchildren, Melissa Gabby, Jacqueline Christine Hughes, Adam Oldham, Meryl Slay, Mackenzie Bergeron, Sabrina Slay, and Jolene Slay, eight grandchildren, and a great-great-grandson, and many nieces and nephews. Born in Cleveland, Oklahoma, Joanne was the first, the third of Tasker and Rose Mor- Morrison's four children. The only daughter, Joanne absolutely adored her brothers and proudly claimed to have had large hand in raising the youngest sock. Graduating from Norman High School in 1944, Joanne also attended Hominy High School, where she played in the school's bands, sang in the glee club, and was a ginger snap on the school's inaugural prep, prep, pep squad. After graduation, she married her husband of 48 years, Ray C. Slade Jr., settling in Fort Worth to raise her three children. Ray and Joanne eventually moved to Haltom City, where Joanne spent the next 60 years welcoming generations of her family into her home, which was her greatest joy. For 35 years, Joanne worked as a medical transcriptionist for for Radiology Associates, 
but her true vocation was absolutely divine. For well over 70 years, Joanne served as a Bible teacher, holding weekly classes at Browning Heights Presbyterian, and then went on to teach patients in the memory care unit at Dancing River Assisted Living, where she resided for the last four years. Her passion for the Lord was voracious in authoring four self-published books that chronicled her experience with the divine. She led countless volunteer efforts, serving her church and her community through the most impactful, though the most impactful was her involvement in the Victory Missions of America, a non-denominational, non-profit organization that shares the gospel and plants churches in Colombia. Through Victory Missions, Joanne was able to successfully place over 200 Colombian children with families in the United States. As her family and friends mourn the loss of beloved Joanne, they are comforted to know that all good things all good things God works for the good those who love and who love him and have called according to his purpose Romans 8:28 Joanne is preceded in death by her husband Ray C. Slay Jr., her parents Tasker Bruce and Rose Everly Morrison and her brothers Basil Roland Morrison and Bruce Fleming Morrison My Lord has garments so wondrous fine And myrrh their texture fills Its fragrance reach to this heart of mine With joy my being thrills In garments glorious he will come to open wide the door and i shall enter my heavenly home to dwell forevermore out of the ivory palaces into a world of I'm Jacob Saunders. I am one of her orphans. We have a bunch of them up here as well, and they're here with us. Where do I begin? I begin to try to capture a snapshot of Joanne Morrison's slave's life in this way. I begin where she trusted the Lord, coming from the Holy Scriptures, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. She believed those words and lived them without fail. I cannot tell you how many times she preached those words to me. She ingrained those words into my heart and my mind, and I'm sure many other people would tell you the same. She was born in the 1920s, the roaring 20s of, America, of American history. Her generation was known as the greatest generation. She did her part living up to that name, surviving the Great Depression, World War II, and many other memorable events throughout her 95 years on this earth, culminating in this current pandemic. She was introduced to God at a very young, tender age, writing in her book, and we beheld his glory. She recalls the cradle roll class in Hominy, Oklahoma, where she received her first understanding of God from a song she learned, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. She goes on to write, I understood from my earliest years that there is a God, 
and that he loves me, and there is a book that proves it. Joanne felt that her next Sunday school teacher, Miss Embry, gave her the foundation for teaching God's word for over 60 years. Because God was centered in the influence of her teaching, she recalled of hearing of the death of Miss Embry at the age of five. How devastated she was, but she was relieved because she knew she was in heaven. Even at a young age, Joanne was politically astute. She would debate people at the young, tender age of two about who would be the winner of the political campaigns between Herbert Hoover and Al Smith. That's a long time ago. She said, if you were for Al Smith, so was she. She could rattle off noteworthy events, conversations, and other stories of her childhood and how her upbringing affected her life, even some very painful moments. But she would always come back around and tell me God had worked all these things out for his purpose and his will. I asked her once, how in the world could she span such an arc of time? She said, I never expected to live this long, but she was going to do God's work as long as he...
I'm ready to watch them. I'm looking better by the end of the next day. So, stop. And, uh, other than my brother, the lamb, has moved me longer than any other people. Uh, right there in the last one. And, uh, according to her, and her friends who used to be on me, she had a lot to do with me. I'm going to 
for every day. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to live that. I know other people here who talk to the regular and on the phone, we're all messing up. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sock. Uh, I'd like to ask my, my children, uh, Marilyn McKenzie and Sabrina and Jake, I, they, to come up and say a few words, and then, uh, and then we'll open it up to uh, any others that would like to say a few words. Hello. Um, I am Mackenzie. I am a middle child of Ray Slays, as is Sabrina. Uh, Meryl is our oldest and our leader, somewhat. And uh, Jake is our younger brother. And, uh, you know, obviously Ray Slay got a boy, and so he hit the jackpot. So, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm not going to be able to say a lot, but um, I can tell you what Joanne grandma meant to me and I think to all of us we're Californians um, but Meryl and I grew up a little bit in Texas and lived here until we were nine and eight and then we moved to California and we lost our home but I knew that as long as grandma was here we had a home we had we had a home here we had a life here we were tethered to Texas because of her um, and now that home is gone, and I'm going to miss it a lot. But I know that because she was here, we still have a home, and we still have a home in the family that still lives here. And so that feels really nice that she created this legacy that will long outlive her because we all will remember her, and we still have homes here with all of our family, um, the family that she created. So... So when I'm Meryl again, when I was little, I, I lived to needle my grandmother. And anyone who knows my grandmother and I would know that. I, and I'll give you an example. One time she was driving us home from church, and I may have been seven years old, and I announced for whatever reason that I think I should convert to, to Buddhism. And that's just one example. And there were many, many things like that that I would do that I would just sit on and wait and just reveal it. And that didn't go over so well. And my dad would plead with me to please understand that she's not going to change. You can't change her. Just love her for being your grandmother and it took several times of me hearing that to finally understand it. But one day I decided that I would rather have a genuinely close relationship with my grandmother. We didn't just love each other for being granddaughter and grandmother, that we really deeply knew each other. And so I changed. I set all of my needling aside and 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 I just started I, I genuinely set out to get to really know her as a person and when I went back to school for climate change reasons I thought you know what I'm not even going to tell her why I don't want it to be a thing I but she she started asking about it a lot and she started asking really insightful questions like, why is the ocean so polluted and how can we fix it? She would ask me questions about animal biology. And she used to say things like as a joke that like animals were dumb. 
when I was younger, but, but when she was asking these questions of, of me as an adult who was becoming a scientist, she would always say with wonder, oh, they're so smart. Animals are so smart, even the tiniest ones. And she was right, because they are. And I started noticing, I, I realized that, that she was changing. And I think it was because I wasn't pushing anymore. But she really, she really did change. And I think it, she, she was one of my, my greatest advocates. She was, she was an advocate of all of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. And um, I will always remember that depth of love about her. Hi, I'm Sabrina. I already talked. So, um, it's really hard to put into words the woman that she was. Um, she was just so smart and kind, and she loved every single one of us, like, everyone in our family and everyone. She would talk about Columbia all the time. She was like a broken record where she just would tell me the same story. She'd tell me the Injun Joe story at least twice on the same phone call. Or she would tell me the same stories about Columbia, or she would tell me the same stories about her family. And I would just... and. Sock said this perfectly. I'm going to miss that so much. And I'm so thankful that over the past year, I made it a point to call her at least once a week or every two weeks. Um, but like I said, it's really hard to put into words the woman that she was. And she was so incredibly happy up until the day she she passed. The day before, she was laughing with us, telling us the Injun Joe story again. <laughs> um... She was just simply incredible, and her faith for the Lord was so great, and her love for Him was even greater. And God truly blessed me by being able to get to know Joanne. But I'm blessed beyond belief that she is my grandmother, and so I love her so much, and I miss her like crazy. I'm gonna miss her so much, and she's and one thing that I've seen today and through me calling her and getting to know her is that she has touched so many people's lives and the hole that we have in our hearts now that she's gone is never going to be filled and um and I'm gonna and we're all lucky that we were and blessed that we were able to know her and we all know that and so thank you I'm not going to take too much of your time. Um, Grandma Joanne, what do I say about her? She was a good uncle. Nay, a great... Wait, uncle? <laughs> no, grandma. She was a great grandma, mother. And she believed in the Bible so much. And one of my biggest regrets is not getting to know her story. Not getting to know anything about her. But yet, it really struck home for me when she died. And it just fills my heart that I have you guys. I have you guys to tell her legacy. To pass on the stories. And... Yet, I never got it from the source, and I hate myself for that. But, at the same time, when I look up in the stars, and I just think, she's always just going to be here. She's always just going to be right beside me. She's always just going to pray us on until we die, and we go up to her. And I'm going to miss Grandma Joanne dearly. That's all. Uh, I think there are a few others that might like to say a couple of things. Mr. Wynn. Yeah, I know. Yeah, as long as you don't say anything. Well, maybe I... 
I might have to leave because you're going to say something about this. Ah, my name is Bobby Wynn. Gosh, uh, met Ray 1973 at Halton High School. You know, Miss Slay was always good at bringing people together, and I'm starting a little different because uh, there's a gentleman here today. My dad died when I was nine years old. And this gentleman came to our house. I can remember it like it was yesterday. To speak to my mom to say, hey, everything's going to be okay. But he was the principal at the time at David E. Smith, or at Browning Heights. And I always wanted to be able to thank him. And he's here today. Mr. Smith, I thank you out there. I'm thanking you in public for coming to our house. Never forget it. Thank you. But anyway, I met Ray in 1973 at Halton High School. We became best friends immediately. I'm still trying to figure out why. Well, they only lived a couple of blocks over from us. So I remember the first time I ever went to their house. And, of course, any parent that's meeting somebody's new friend, they will, you know, Miss Slay set me down. Ray was probably getting ready. I don't know what we're going to do. And she started asking me a lot of questions. And I knew she was wanting to make sure I didn't take Ray down the wrong path. Actually, it was the opposite. And after hearing that one story about yeah. drinking, I knew I was correct. And Miss Slay, I told you I was right. You know, I watched after your son. But, you know, I told her about, she wanted to know about my life. And she was very interested in it. And when I told her, you know, my, at that time I was 16 years old and my dad had died when I was nine years old. And she took an interest in that. And I told her my mom worked at a bank. I actually worked with Pam's mom. And they were best friends. And that's a whole other story. We won't get into it, will we, Pam? <laughs> and, and, uh, and it just seemed suddenly like I became a son to her. Because any time I'd go over there, and it was the same way when Ray would come to our house. I posted a picture of he and I graduating together. A few weeks ago, it just showed up. And well, he still has hair. Yeah. And so, uh, so it just seemed like we just had a great relationship. She always accepted me and even up, raised other friends, just like another son. And she was always inquisitive. And she'd always ask me about my mom. In 1982, my mom came down with cancer. And I bet Miss Slay was at our house two to three times a week, just checking on my mom. And I remember one night, uh, I was in the kitchen. I lived next door, actually, and I was over there because Miss Slay was there. And I was in the kitchen, and I heard him in the bedroom just talking about God. I don't know what they talked about, but I remember after that how peaceful my mother was mentally. Miss Slay would come over and just talk to her like she would talk and talk about God because my mother lived six weeks to the day she found out she had cancer. So I know Miss Slay gave her a lot of peace and a lot of comfort, and I never got to thank her. Thank you. I always believe God brings people together for a reason. And when Ray and I met in 1973, that brought Miss Slate into my life. She was the smartest, kindest lady I'd ever met. Whenever I'd go over there, she's always trying to feed me. And at that time, I weighed 240 pounds. And she's always trying to feed me. But it was healthy food. As Ray and I talked about, you know how healthy she ate. She lived to be 95. Maybe there's something about eating healthy. But I look back now, Miss Slay was that diamond that shined bright on everybody. She had a great influence. and You wouldn't be here today if she didn't have an influence in your life some way, somehow. And all I want to say, Ray, thanks for sharing your mom. Miss Slay, thanks for taking me in as a son. God bless.
In true Joanne fashion, she chose the songs for today, and she chose the scriptures for today. Let's now hear the words that she believed with all her heart. John three twelve through 18, it'll be familiar. Wait a second. If I had told you about earthly things and you did not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. First Thessalonians 4, beginning with verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Philippians 1.21 For to me... Living is Christ, and dying is gain. And no one else probably can figure out what the next one is. (laughs) Joanne and I had kind of like others, we would disagree about some things, and hers was always Romans 8, 28, and I kept telling her she stopped too soon. That 8, 38 was what it was all about. So she included it. I know it was just for me. (laughs) Hear these words and believe as Joanne did. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What are we then to say about these things if God is for us? Who can be against us? 
He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, and who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. For it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God for these words. Each one of us is here today because we each have an imprint of Joanne Morrison Slay on our life. And as I began to get ready for this message, so many thoughts came barreling in, and it was just overwhelming to some degree. And yet, yesterday afternoon, it was clear. While Joanne would acknowledge and shake her head and smile and even laugh with us at all the references I might touch on, Joanne would really not want this gathering to be about her. And even if that was the case, who am I to speak about her family and that love when a granddaughter and son, granddaughters and son and son can speak so eloquently? I must add, though, if anyone knew Joanne, they were informed that she had the smartest, the most beautiful, the most creative, the most wonderful son and daughters, granddaughters, grandsons, and great-grands. Because she told us so. And she believed in you. And she loved you. And even if I felt the need to touch on her life's mission work, who am I to speak? When one that experienced it firsthand has told us about it. No, um, Joanne would want me to tell you about Jesus and how he loves us. She was an example of one who loved Christ with all her heart and with all her soul and mind and strength. And because she loved so much, she read She studied, she believed, and she lived the words of Jesus to her very best. From ordering a little brother from a catalog in Hominy, Oklahoma, to teaching Bible studies in assisted living 
She loved Jesus. And she wanted everyone she met to love him too. As I reflected on the scriptures that she chose, I could see Joanne witnessing daily to these scriptures. And when I did begin to try to put some words together, just numerous adjectives describing Joanne came to mind. Educated, expectant, effective, Earnest, excited, exceptional, eager, extraordinary, encouraging, eloquent, enthused, essential, expert. Joanne lived her life expectantly. You know, she could have been called a miracle spotter. You know, others might have seen worldly circumstances coming together, but Joanne, Joanne saw miracles. So many of my phone calls with her started with, Linda, I just had to call you. About a miracle. Others came to her expectantly. A more determined, tenacious prayer warrior could not be found. In making a prayer request, people knew their prayers were being heard. Joanne believed those prayers were answered. Joanne was excited about her love for Jesus and Jesus' love for us. She wanted to share that excitement with all. You know, it's almost, it's almost unbelievable how many Bible scriptures and the interpretation of those scriptures were found in the stories of Hominy, Oklahoma. You should have come to our Bible study at Browning Heights because they all started in Hominy. My whole knowledge of Hominy, Oklahoma came from Joanne. Members of Browning Heights Presbyterian Church were so excited about how many it was a scheduled stop on one of their vacations. <laughs> Joanne was encouraging and enthusiastic, using, using her leadership skills for the church or mission work. Joanne encouraged others to do more, to step up. To realize their potential. People had a difficult time turning Joanne down. And always with the phrase, she encouraged, I will pray for you. Joanne was earnest. She was earnest in her hunger for more knowledge about Christ and his love. Daily, she was earnest in her thirst for the living water in her life. Joanne greeted every person with a smile. Joanne did demonstrate unconditional love to her family and friends even if one did not agree with every belief that Joanne held to she loved and prayed for you Joanne was exceptional 
And she had an exceptional life. Her life was not always easy, but with an exceptional attitude, she persevered. Always, always believing. Romans 8, 28. She had exceptional faith in a God that loved her and loves us. And she was eager to share that message with all. She relayed many times about visitors coming to see Pepper, her bird. And that may have some truth to it. But I don't think it would be surprising to know they came to experience Joanne. Her calm her prayers, her truth, her love. Joanne was an exceptional friend, guide, mentor, prayer partner, person, child of God. Today, we will leave here with lots of memories, and we may be a bit sad, but we can leave here with a mission to honor this extraordinary woman, to honor this woman as we remember her goals, to love Jesus and tell others about him. Look for miracles. Tell others about them. Pray without ceasing. And love one another. Matthew 25 23 says, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, we hear Paul's words. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Rest now, Joanne. You are home. And now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, Make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches and told. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dead way I'd rather have Jesus than anything 
this world affords today. And Lord, haste that day when the face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is. Well, I hope I haven't, haven't kept you too long. Uh, I, I love you, and call me anytime. <laughs>